Welcome to using Padlet to create student choice boards. I'm Jennifer Bailey from sing to kids You can find my TPT store by searching sing to kids all one word. Feel free to hit the follow button for updates and search the many categories of resources I have available for you. Also, if you like music ed blogs, you can find me at www.singtokids.com. There you'll find a variety of topics from distance learning, pedagogy, classroom management, and more. You can also search categories under the Find It Fast tab. Today, you'll learn how to create an account on Padlet, how to create topics, and link content on Padlet, as well as how to organize content on Padlet. What you'll need is an account for Padlet, how you would like to organize your Padlets, whether it be by grade level or topic, and a list of content you'd like to explore with your students, videos, images, assignments, etc. Let's get started. The first thing you'll need to do is to go to Padlet.com. Once you're there, you'll need to create an account. You can use Apple, Google, or Microsoft, and you'll just enter in your email address. And then you'll want to create a password. Make sure to click on the little button uh, next to I'm beautiful so they know that you're not a bot and you'll sign up. Basic accounts are free and give you three Padlets to start from. Now we're going to click make a Padlet. You'll see that there are eight templates, wall, canvas, stream, grid, shelf, back channel, map, and timeline. We're going to use the shelf template today. Once you choose your template, you'll begin to personalize it. The first thing we'll do is title the Padlet and give it a description. I'm giving it a generic name, but you might label it as a lower owl or grade level specific Padlet. Be sure to give it a description too. Once you've done that, the next thing is to add an icon if you choose. The emoji menu is pretty standard and you'll see I really have to scroll down to get to the music icons. I'm still scrolling. Keep going. They're there, I promise. Almost there. Oops. Next, we'll choose a wallpaper that will serve as the background. There are many choices, but I tend to err on solid colors so that Padlet doesn't appear too busy or overstimulating for children. You'll see that you can also add pictures if you choose, but again, it's really just your choice as to what's appealing to your eye. You'll see you have choice over fonts as well. I just keep with a very standard clean font uh, so that it's easy to read for children. Now, you can see here we have uh, a new post position. You can put it first or last. You can allow comments or not allow comments. You can also allow reactions much like a social media page. There's also uh, an opportunity to filter your content. So if you're allowing comments, you might want to moderate them before they're posted so they might require approval. And they can filter profanity, but they use nice emojis and I just would rather stay away from all of that. So when I allow comments, I always moderate. All right, we're all ready to start. So the first thing we're going to do is to name our column, and this is going to become our topics. So my first topic is Welcome to Music. The next one I'm going to put as my Melodic Activities topic. So I'm going to do it by elements of music, so I have Melodic, Rhythmic, I'm going to have a Movement uh, Activity topic,
instruments as well as song tales because I'm thinking about my Laurel students. All right, now that I have my topics in place, I have to start adding my content. And to add my content, I'm going to take you to a new page. So you can see here, I have Welcome to Music, and I like to add a little introductory post for my students as well as parents. So I just like to tell them this is our digital choice board. Here's how it's going to function or work and um, let them know how often I'll be posting new content. Next, I'm going to be putting activities under each one of our topics. So for a melodic activities, I'm going to be going to my YouTube page. This is I. Uh, uh, the channel is Sing to Kids, and I'm just going to be copying and pasting the links of the songs or activities I want to use there. So this particular uh, song is Closet Key, and I'll add a short description, and then I'm going to click on the um, URL link and add that link, and what you'll see is that the um, picture of the song from YouTube will appear there. Now I'm going to do the same thing for each uh, topic so I have something under each one. I'm grabbing a second song for you to put under melodic activities just so I can show you how you can manipulate uh, different activities and songs um, within a topic as well. I have to tell you that I typically um, will have a list of songs and activities I'm going to post from week to week, and I keep them cataloged on a spreadsheet so I know what I'm going to add, what I'm going to delete, what content I've already used, and, and that way it just helps me keep organized everything that I'm going to do. It's sort of like creating a lesson plan for your Padlet. So again, I'm just uh, populating each one of the topics with an activity, song, movement activity, copying and pasting the URLs, and then moving back into um, Padlet. Now, I spent a lot of time this spring recording lessons for my students, uh, recording folk songs and recording nursery rhymes, and um, really trying to create music class as it would be experienced within our room. In fact, you might notice on some of the videos, it looks like I'm in my classroom. It's actually a green screen where I've just overlaid a picture of my classroom behind me so that students have some familiarity. They look at that and go, oh, that's the music room and there's my teacher and she's teaching just like we would be if we were in our uh, classroom at any given time. So I'm just continuing to populate these different topics. Um, certainly uh, my YouTube page is a great resource for elementary music teachers, but I use links from all different um, uh, YouTube channels of other music teachers, as well as um, assignments and, and videos from uh, popular artists, or you know, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna take one from uh, the Piano Guys in just a moment. It takes a little work to get this started at the front end, but what I find is that I add content and just like I might layer new content against old content or practice and review different things in my classroom, that the Padlet functions the same way where I'm going to um, have a little bit of new content. I'm going to have some content that we're practicing and learning some new skills or some new content with, and then just, you know, one or two feel good activities at the end. So there's always something new, something to practice and something that's enjoyable for my kids. It's never all new content from week to week. So now you can see we have something here for each 
one of these topics. We have melodic activities, rhythmic activities, movement activities, instruments, and song tales. And certainly, I probably have three to four things uh, on each of these four class over the course of a few weeks. So it's not all one thing. Now, I wanted to show you that if I wanted to change uh, the order, I can just click and move that up. I can actually go in and highlight something. I can transfer a post, copy it, set it as a cover. I can also delete things. I tend to delete songs when we're done using them over the course of a few weeks because I don't want it to get too clogged up within the Padlet from week to week. I want it to be easy for my students to find things and to click and access things. So now that I have it all done, there's a couple ways I can share. I can add members. I can send a link to the students. I can even get a QR code and send that to my students if they're adept at using that. I can email it to parents, share it on Facebook or Twitter if you so choose, but I love this function where I can share it directly to Google Classroom. So if your district is using Google Classroom, I can click share on Google Classroom and a little dialog box will pop up and I can click on the classes that I want to send it to uh, and do that uh, right away. The other thing that you can do, which I love, is you can export this and save it as a PDF. And the lovely thing about that is that, again, if you wanted to send this to parents via email, it shows up like a little newsletter and all of the pictures, not everything is populated, all of the pictures are hyperlinks so they can click on it and it takes you right to the YouTube channel uh, where the kids can see it. Now, one thing I want you to keep in mind is that many school districts have filters and you might need to approve songs or activities so that students can see them. So, for instance, when I started doing this, um, I had to go and approve every song that I linked on my Padlet so that my students could see them I, because that's the way our district filtered YouTube videos. Uh, with my channel, I could go in and just approve the entire channel. So anything I posted on my YouTube channel, students could automatically see. But you may need to get permission. Otherwise, you'll build this beautiful thing, this beautiful Padlet, and students will click on it and they'll get an error message. You can also link things from Google Classroom. So if you have an assignment in Google Classroom, or maybe you have a game that you have in Google Classroom that uses slides, like I have many things like that available to my students, you can actually go in and assign, as long as anything that has a URL can be assigned on a Padlet. And so I think that's really neat. You could also do listening lessons and allow comments so students could comment what did they hear, what did they notice, what moved them in the music, did they pay attention to a certain timbre or instrument, did they notice form, did they notice tonality or meter. So there are so many different ways you can use Padlet to engage your students in learning beyond just a student choice board. I wanted to share with you what my particular Padlet looked like towards the end of the spring. So this is my actual student choice board for my kindergarten first grade students. And you can see I have a little greeting there where I recorded a video. I have a greeting to parents and my email address so they can reach out to me. And then you can see the songs and activities. I always end the year with campfire songs and we do a variety of activities with the kids um, just to be uh, fun and, and have some lightheartedness. There are some movement activities that I did with my students. And here's a little game we did where we uh, did a masked singer and the kids were allowed to record themselves using Flipgrid and they sang a favorite song from music class. And the fun thing was they could choose to dress up and use maybe a costume or a mask that they had at home. And if they didn't have that, they could then use the emojis in Flipgrid to cover their face. And I will tell you, it was one of the best things we did. My kids were so engaged. They had so much fun. And I could not get over how many of my boys participated in the activity 
more so even than my girls. And so that was just a really fun thing. But that just goes to show you, you can link multiple flat platforms to Padlet. It's not specific to YouTube videos. Like I said, you can link things to Google Classroom. You can link games to other websites. It's just a wonderful way to present uh, information for students. I wanted to share with you another Padlet that I've been working on. I do a world music unit with my students, and this is using, again, a template within Padlet where you get a world map. And what we began to do, this is a collaborative board that I'm doing with another music teacher in my district, is that we began to link authentic songs and performances um, to country so the kids could see the country on the map, they could click on it and then hear and see authentic videos of students singing or dancing or performing an instrument. So the ways that you can use Padlet are endless. There are so many different ways. I have a Padlet for music around the world. I have an upper elementary Padlet for my older students where it's organized more by um, content in terms of there's ukulele resources, there are recorder resources, there are drumming resources, so that depending on what each grade level is doing at any time, I can really tailor instruction uh, based upon those different topics. I just want to say thank you so much for coming to my presentation today. And um, I'll be posting links to my session and handouts on my webpage and in the comments below. The handout will also be available as a freebie on my TPT store, so please look for it there. If the questions arise later, I'm one of those persons that I process and then I always ask the question. So please feel free to reach out to me via my website, singtokids.com, or my email address, singtokids at gmail.com. Again, thank you so much for attending today's session. Have a wonderful day.